Hi there, I'm Zach Fieser, an OpenStack trainer with Alta3 Research. We think the best way to learn a new skill is to watch a demonstration and then try those skills on your own. At the conclusion of this video, I'll let you know how to get access to the same OpenStack lab environment I use in this video to test the concepts we're about to explore. The objective of this video is to take a closer look at how the OpenStack permission file or RC file is utilized when issuing commands to OpenStack at the CLI. To complete our objective, we'll examine how to retrieve an RC file from Horizon, examining the values it contains, and then how to use it at the CLI. Okay, let's get started. The OpenStack dashboard, Horizon, and the OpenStack command line interface, Python clients, are the two ways to access and use various services provided by OpenStack. Horizon provides a simple sign-in portal through which users may provide credentials to sign in. After entering proper credentials, we're taken to the Horizon interface. However, with the CLI, commands are issued directly to a Python client. There's no such sign-in. The solution is to include necessary credentials with every OpenStack command, or export a set of environmental variables containing those credentials for the OpenStack command line clients to reference. Let's try issuing some commands to make this clear. I'll ask the OpenStack Python client to retrieve a list of available images for booting virtual machines. So that didn't work. Let's read the error and figure out why. Missing parameters. Looks like first and foremost, I'm being asked to provide a username. So let's provide a username. All right, so it still didn't work. Once more, let's read the error to figure out why. Again, missing parameters. Looks like now we're being prompted to provide an authorization URL. The authorization URL is a description of the socket Keystone is listening on. Again, it still doesn't work. I'll cut right to the chase. In addition to the parameters we've already provided, my environment requires I also provide the project name, the domain name, as well as a password for the user. So finally, I see a list of available images is displayed. Notice I also said my environment, the parameters required in your environment, might be unique. Including these parameters with every command would be burdensome. However, there's a solution, which is the aforementioned OpenRC file. While we could go manufacture our own, Horizon provides a pre-made file for us. Let's go retrieve it, and we can see how it works. Within Horizon, I can find this file by going to Project, Compute, Access and Security, and then clicking on API access. I can see that there's actually two versions of this file, one for Identity v2, another for Identity v3. Identity v2 has been deprecated, but you should be able to make the determination as to what's being used in your environment by looking at the API version associated with the identity service or Keystone. The primary difference is that in v2, we use the term tenant, in v3, we've replaced that term with the word project. Additionally, v3 introduces this a concept or idea of domains. You can find links to descriptions of the identity v2, v3 APIs below this video. But for right now, I'm going to pull up the OpenRC v3 file. I was logged into Horizon as admin, so this file is pre-populated for me as that user. For example, if I was logged in as Alice, then this file would reflect Alice's credentials. The word export sets an environmental variable, which prevents the user from having to include that parameter with their command. Looking to the first export command, here is where we set the socket Keystone is listening on. The UUID of my project, as well as the name of my project, is exported after that. The domain is set here. Hyphen Z returns true if the length of the string is zero. So we read this line as if OS user domain has no value, then go ahead and unset the environmental variable. 
unset, undoes, uh, retracts an environmental variable. Tenant was replaced with project. So these lines see that if set, those environmental variables are unset. Just good housekeeping. Here we set the username. Rather than store a password within the text file, these lines ask the user to enter their password. Echo prints to the screen. Read waits for input, where the hyphen S is silent mode. Do not echo input coming from a terminal. And hyphen R does not allow backslashes to work as escape characters. Finally, the red value is exported as the appropriate environmental value. Region is exported. Here the admin, public, or internal interface is set. And finally, the version of the identity API being used. So again, if we wanted, we could include these permissions with every command we issued. Or instead, we can source this file at the command line. I went ahead and saved the file we just looked at as admin-openrc.sh. There it is. We can take a look at the problem again. If I issue OpenStack image list, I see I'm being prompted for parameters. So let's go ahead and let's source the file, the admin-openrc.sh. I'm being prompted for my password, so I'll enter that. Now I should just be able to type an OpenStack command and it will automatically be issued with those credentials. There's the OpenStack image list, it just works. We can try an OpenStack server list all. There's all the virtual machines that are running in my cloud. Again, every environment's unique and therefore will reflect its own unique exports and values. If you're curious and you're wondering how did that file get made that we just looked at, it's generated from a template, and that template can be found in the following location. I'm going to pop it on the screen because it's kind of long to read. But ultimately, we're looking for a file called openrc.sh.template. There I've listed the directory's contents, and I can now print to the screen the template, openrc.sh.template. And you can see that's the template that actually built the file we just examined. If you are downloading this file and it's not working properly, well, maybe your template has a bug in it. Occasionally this does happen. I want you to hop over to GitHub slash OpenStack slash Horizon. Select your release from the branch. I'm using Mataka. Click the Find File button and then search for OpenRC. Right at the top, we see that template file, openrc.sh.template, and I can see what this latest version of the template file should look like. So if maybe the template on GitHub had OS identity API version and my template was lacking that, I might manually augment my downloaded RC file. I might just write that value in there to see if it gets me unstuck. I find a lot of people are brand new to Linux environments when they start working with OpenStack. So just a few helpful hints if you're one of these people. The first is print env, which will show us the environmental variables already set. Maybe we're wondering whose RC file did we source? Well, if we do print env pipe grep os underscore, grep means find. So we're saying show me the environmental variables, but only print those that have something to do with OpenStack, that begin with OS underscore. All right, so we just learned we can see what environmental variables are set. Let's do that again. Now let's unset an environmental variable. Say my password had been set incorrectly. I'm going to write unset OS password. Now if I grep again, that password has been unset. So I unset my password. What if I wanted to hard code a password into the OpenRC file we looked at? Well, I'm not going to explain Vim. Vim is a text editor. It's a modal text editor that I'm using here. But what you can see I'm about to do is hard code export OS underscore password with a value alt of 3. All right, so I can save and quit. And what I will do is now source again 
that file. So admin open rc.sh, the one we just edited. If I now grep for the appropriate environmental variables, password should be reset. And there it is. It's set as Alta 3 once again. The demo I've been performing has been conducted with an Alta 3 Research's OpenStack remote desktop environment. It's the same environment Alta 3 Research uses in its public online, private customer on-site, and self-paced, instructor-assisted OpenStack training options. The environment is browser and operating system agnostic. There's no plugins. There's no lab setup time. It just always works. So, if you or your organization need really good OpenStack training, or if you're looking to pass the Certified OpenStack Administrator exam, we can help. To our potential customers, we offer free trial access to the OpenStack environment I was just working in, as well as some of our structured labs. To get access is as simple as clicking over to alta3.com demo. Fill out a simple form. If you'd prefer, you can hit us up in a chat or give us a call. Thanks for watching, and I hope you decide to train with Alta3 Research.